Assalamu alaikum. This part of the lecture is related to uh, second part of the words test. So let's see what we are going to discuss in this part. Okay, characteristics of a prominent syllable. Prominent syllable means a syllable that is prominent or that is distinct and louder than the other syllables. There are four major factors in this regard. Loudness. Many people uh, seem to feel that stressed syllables, they are louder than the unstressed syllables. Or in other words, loudness is a component of prominence. Uh, look at this nonsense word. A repeated A, ah, syllable ba, ba is there. So if one syllable is made louder than the others, it will be heard as stressed. So loudness uh, is a factor to make a syllable prominent. But uh, the way, how can we say it? Ba, 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 ba. So one syllable is made louder and that appears to be stressed. The second factor is length. Length of syllables, it has important part to play in prominence. If one of the syllables in the same nonsense word is uh, made longer, then it will be heard as stressed. For say, ba, 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 ba. So that longer syllable appears to be stressed. Okay, the third is pitch, which is every voiced syllable, it means stressed syllable, is said on some pitch, which means that how high or low note of that sound is it is in terms of frequency of the vibration uh, of the vocal cords that how quickly the vocal cord uh, cords or vocal folds vocal cords and vocal folds they um, both mean the same they how quickly they vibrate what is their frequency that makes a sound uh, high pitched or low pitched or high note or low note Third is the quality of uh, the vowel in that syllable with the reference to the neighboring vowels Okay, so a syllable will tend to be prominent if it contains a vowel that is different in quality from the neighboring vowels. So, uh, for example, look at the same word. Instead of no, a, ah, we have added e. So, because of this changed, uh, the neighboring vowel is a, ah, a, ah, a, ah, fine. But the middle, in the middle, we have a different vowel. And because of this, it appears to be, this odd syllable appears to be stressed. Ba, bi, ba, ba. So this B, because this is different from the other syllables, ba, 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 so it appears to be uh, stressed. Okay, these are some, these were some of the factors for making a syllable prominent, four factors. Levels of stress. Linguists agree that there are three levels of stress in English. It means three levels of prominence that a syllable can have. Number one is the primary level. It is the most prominent syllable. And it is represented with a high mark. We have discussed this diacritic marks before. Secondary level, this is the second prominent and it is represented with a low mark. Again, a diacritic mark related to pronunciation of that particular sound or letter. Tertiary level or weak, that is least prominent and it is not represented with any mark. Fine, so there are three levels of stress. Look at the word partnership. How many syllables we have? Three. Partnership. So the primary stress, if you see here, this is the primary stress. It is on part. Fine. And secondary stress is on ship. Now see, before this sh sound, below we have this. So how you are going to pronounce it? Partnership. So this na is actually the tertiary syllable. It, that's why it is not uh, at all marked. So this is primary, secondary and tertiary uh, levels of stress. Functional stress. Why we call it functional? Because this stress can change the noun into verb or verb into noun. Function of a word changes. Grammatical function of a word. From a noun, it can be used as a verb. So there are a number of two-syllable words which function both as noun or adjective and verbs. Fine. For example, conduct, it can be noun, it can be verb. Convict, it can be noun, it can be verb. In a sentence, we how it is used, then it is decided. These words have stressed on uh, stress on first syllables when they are used as noun or adjective. We will see the examples in the next slide. And stress occurs on the second syllable when they are used as verbs. Moreover, in noun and adjective, the stress is in the beginning of the word, and in verbs, it is towards end of the word. Okay, look at these examples. <clears throat> this is noun. Her conduct. <clears throat> this con part is actually stress. She conducts herself well. So this ducts is here actually stressed. So this is verb. 
what is your import policy so this this syllable m is stressed we import this port is stressed so because of this stress you will come to know it is verb and because of the stress in the in first syllable you will get this as adjective similarly that is present adjective and that is present so see this part is stressed verb this is object of your uh, case that is now and this is object this object is actually stressed so this is verb same is the case with the next word that is subjects and this is subjected so this subjected part is so moreover in verb we have stressed towards uh, end of the word and moreover in noun or adjective this is towards beginning of the word first syllable okay two syllable words okay if we have a word having two syllable so the first or the second syllable will be stressed not both syllables will be stressed if there are two for example look at this word enter so only one of the syllables will be stressed not both so we have discussed that there is a general tendency for the verbs to be stressed nearer end of a word and for nouns to be stressed nearer at the beginning it means that moreover in noun stress is on the first syllable and in verbs it can be on second moreover okay now look at this example n th so this n is actually stressed you can see this high mark here okay then nv this v e is unstressed as you can uh, recall we have uh, discussed three uh, weak uh, syllable prominents in which we have shua e e and u u open again shua so that is why this pun part is weak equal this vowel part is weak and stress is on the first syllable first part okay a final syllable is also unstressed we are talking about two syllable word a word that can be divided into two parts two syllables uh, a final syllable is also unstressed if it contains o follow so see this o becomes very low in tone borrow so this o is low in tone unstressed so these are two so only the stressed syllable is shown here okay then we have if two syllable adjectives are there again you will see that love lee so which is stressed lovely lee e is actually unstressed and again you see this shua shua is a weak sound, uh, vowel and it comes in weak syllable so this is correct before this rect there is a high mark to show the stress again shua is weak there that's why there is no uh, high mark so alive this live part is actually stressed same is same is the case with divine so these all are actually adjectives two syllable and stress is almost the same rule that we have discussed in this slide okay then there are three syllable words we are not going into detail of uh, this in three syllable words uh, if the final syllable is strong it will be stressed entertain see this tain part is actually stressed resurrect so this rect part is stressed if the last syllable is weak then it will be unstressed definitely weak so it will be unstressed and stress will be placed on the preceding syllable that is penultimate that is before that if that syllable is strong for example encounter so see before this final syllable this last syllable th is unstressed is weak and before preceding means before before this we have kaun this kaun is this is actually penultimate that comes before the last syllable or you can say second last if it is so that is penultimate encounter determine so again this th part is actually stressed and this min is weak if both second and third syllables are weak then the stress falls definitely on the initial syllable that is the case parody pa part is actually stressed r and d is unstressed both are having the uh, weak dominant uh, vowels okay sum up english pronunciation depends on stress to a great uh, deal in order to become a powerful communicator of english we must learn all the rules of stress mentioned and uh, for this purpose the best way to consult is the dictionary 
being non native speakers of language it is not possible to learn all these rules unless we apply them so dictionary is the best help to see that how the stresses actually work in different uh, syllables of the words so all rules regarding the stress patterns of these languages are impossible to learn definitely however we learn some basic rules to improve and make dictionary your friend so that you can become a better communicator in terms of pronunciation thank you so much this is all about word stress